we select and drill cylindrical rock samples or cores with the desired properties out of larger blocks. We then seal the outer edges of these core samples to keep the fluids inside and then to allow us to maintain them at the desired pressure and temperature. We mount the cores in a holder and put them into an oven which then can maintain the desired temperature. We drill into the side of the core holder taps which allow us to measure pressure. This is important to make sure that we obtain the conditions we want and also to see how easily the fluids are flowing, how much of a pressure they build up as they flow through the core. We attach flow lines that allow us to inject and produce the fluids, see what is retained inside and what flows out and how the fluids that flow out have been changed from what flows in. Finally, we can actually see what happens inside the core using an X-ray computer tomography machine. What you see here, it's the same technology that's used to image inside the human body in a hospital. Here we use it to see the interactions of fluids inside the rock. We study the flow and interaction of fluids in rock layers by doing experiments with rock samples in the laboratory. So we inject fluids into these porous rock samples measure how they interact, how easily they flow, how much they're trapped, and from those experiments predict what happens underground. It's of course much easier to do experiments in the laboratory than it is to do them out in the field. From, from these measurements then we make predictions. For instance, how much carbon dioxide is trapped as it flows through porous rock. This helps us to understand the efficiency of carbon dioxide storage to reduce global warming.